That is a $1,500 Savage Front Running bot at work right there. This thing is just printing money, front running orders. Hey everybody, Orion here. And if you don't want that to happen to you, then you need to understand front running in crypto. And that's what we're talking about here today. If you trade on a decentralized exchange, think Uniswap, think SushiSwap, then you need to understand what front running it is and how to reduce your exposure to being front run. So in this video, we're going to take a look at what front running is. I want to give you a template so you can recognize the transactions that are the signature of a front run transaction. Next, I'm going to talk about how it works in crypto. Front running has been around in the security markets for ages when it comes to stocks, bonds, you name it. But we're going to look at how it happens in the crypto market and how it's even more important and relevant in crypto today than maybe in any market ever before. And at the end, I'll give you a couple of tips on what you can do to your orders when you're trading on SushiSwap, Uniswap, any of these decentralized exchanges, these AMMs or automated market makers in order to reduce the incentive you provide to bots to front run your order. So let's quickly talk about what front running is. Front running is a predatorial transaction where somebody exploits either insider knowledge or privileged information about a big transaction that could move the market before it hits the market. One of the fundamental things you need in order to commit front running is knowledge about a transaction that's about to happen. And once you have that, once you know about a big order about to go to the market, you have almost everything you need to front run. And here's how it works. If I knew that a large buy order were about to go through, say I knew that someone was going to buy 10 million shares of BlackBerry. So what do I do? I get in front of that order. I put a little buy in and I buy shares of BlackBerry for myself. Then I watch the big order that I knew was coming go through pushing up the price of the security and then I crystallize with a sell. That is front running. Notice that the transaction that I had advanced knowledge about is sandwiched in between the two predatorial transactions. That predatorial sandwich right there is the signature of a front running transaction. Now you might ask yourself, well, how does this person have advanced knowledge of that large market moving trade? They might be in a privileged position, an executive within the company or a consultancy that's working with this company or the other one, it might be a privileged relationship. Say they're, uh, say the person is an advisor and they're advising their client to make this large transaction. Whatever it is, it's probably illegal. So let's take a look at how this plays out in crypto markets. And I want to start by telling a bit of a personal story because this topic became very real for me very recently. Rewind about five days ago, SushiSwap, one of these DEXs, decentralized exchanges, launched a new platform called Miso. And what Miso is, is a platform to launch new cryptocurrencies. Think Kickstarter for crypto. And the very first project that they were bringing to their platform was this thing called the Sake Coin. 888 bottles of this rare, hyper premium handcrafted sake that comes in this bottle that was designed by a Netherlands architecture group. It's over the top in absolutely every way it could be. It's kind of this intersection of a bunch of megatrends, cryptocurrency, NFTs, and Kickstarter or crowdsourcing projects. I loved everything about this project, so I decided to back it. And so on May 26th, the auction ended and all of the backers put in their money and received their sake tokens. And one of the amazing things about crypto is just how fast things move. Within minutes or hours, this coin, the sake coin, was listed and started trading on SushiSwap. And I could see all of the transactions listed on their analytics page. And then I noticed this. Two transactions back to back. The first one, is to buy 0.4887 sake coins 
uh, for a, you know, a little over $7,000. And then right after it, right after it, they sell those exact 0.4887 socket coins for a 1500 US dollar profit. Boom, boom. They bought and immediately sold. But this doesn't make any sense. Why would the market price have moved at all if the back to back adjacent transactions? And so I got really curious. And so I went over to the Discord channel. Uh, Sake has a Discord channel. And I started asking people, hey, these transactions, like, do I not understand something? Like, what's up? How did this person just trade uh, half a Sake coin for a $1,500 profit instantly? I want to do it. What's the trick? And so somebody said, hey, have you gone to Source and checked Etherscan? Uh, no, I hadn't. So I went to find the transaction on Etherscan. And lo and behold, the transaction looked a little bit different. Instead of being adjacent transactions, I saw this pattern right here. There's the buy for 0.4887 sake coins. Then there's this big whale transaction of one sake coin, followed by a sell of those 0.4887 coins, crystallizing the 1500 gain. But do you recognize the pattern? Do you recognize that predatorial sandwich? That is a $1,500 savage front running bot at work right there. $1,500 in a moment sandwiched. That's incredible. And so now I was able to identify this is absolutely a front running transaction. How on earth did they know about that sake coin transaction? Remember, a critical ingredient, the key ingredient to a front run is that you have to have that inside information or privileged information about a large transaction that's about to happen. Where did they get that knowledge? To get this part, it's gonna be important to have some sort of understanding of the mechanics of blockchain technology. I'll go through that, but I'm going to try to describe it in a non-technical way so that as many people as possible can follow along. Blockchain is a great way to describe the technology because it's effectively blocks of data all chained together. And the Ethereum blockchain, which is what this cryptocurrency is based on, uh, new blocks are formed about every 15 seconds or so. And each block can only contain about 70 transactions worth of data. So you've got 70 transactions being processed about every 15 seconds. And if you are not in one of those blocks, your order is pending. It's not gonna be executed. And once a block is formed by the miners, the 70 transactions contained in that block execute in chronological or priority order. They go in a perfect sequence until the next block is found and the next 70 transactions, plus or minus, are put into the next block and that executes. And if you are not in a block, whether it's a transfer of money, whatever the transaction may be, a, a, an order to buy, order to sell, trying to move money, a, a sophisticated contract, you name it, any transaction can't go through until it's put into a block. But here's the challenge. I'm gonna to go to Etherscan right now. I'm gonna to go to this blockchain dropdown and select view pending transactions on Etherscan. And you can see there's 150,000 pending transactions. Blockchain is wildly popular right now. Crypto is wildly popular and there is an impossible backlog of transactions. So how on earth does one transaction get picked up over other ones? Well, this has been solved a million times over and it's called tipping. You're basically gonna pay the miners who build these blocks to take your order over anybody else's. Think of it like dueling pianos in Vegas. You want your song played, you write down your song title and you put a bigger tip on top of it than the next person's tip on their song. Same principle except done digitally. And while this is a bit of an oversimplification, that tip is basically this, the gas price. 
The gas that you add to your transaction is effectively your tip, and you can see it here on Etherscan. So here we have a backlog of 150,000 transactions, all of which we can see here, and we can see effectively the amount of money they've tipped to be included in the next block. Yeah, and bots can see this too, and in fact they can read this stuff about the speed of light. And so this is where that insider slash privileged information exists. Your order that you send to a blockchain has to go into this pending pool called the mempool, and it sits there waiting to be put into the next block. And while it's there, it's a sitting duck to front running bot attacks. Yes, all they need to do is look at this information here, see what you're buying, how much you're tipping to get in the next block, and then if it's a big enough transaction where the bot determines that it's large enough, material enough to move the market, it can just enter an order right away, copy and paste your details, but increase their tip gas by one, that would get them in front of you in the chain of priority, and then they take your gas minus one and enter their sell order, and when all of these get picked up and put into the next block, and that block executes line by line, boom! Their order goes in front of the big order that they identified, then their sell goes through, and that is the predatorial sandwich signature that we talked about when we talked about how front running is done. They have everything they need in order to perfectly execute the strategy and it's happening all the time. It's happening right now. That account that I showed you, the savage 1500 US dollar profit in just seconds is milking it right now. Here's another transaction where they took sake coin for $150. Oh, and here they are again for 200 US dollars. And that's just the obscure sake coin transactions that I was able to find. Here's the actual wallet address. You can see it's repeated this process multiple times in the last hour. And for days on end, it's got almost half a million dollars in this wallet, about 75% of which is sitting in stable coins. This thing is just printing money, front running orders. It's amazing. It's amazing the efficiency and you need to understand that this is happening so that you can uh, understand the risk and take appropriate steps to manage your exposure to this risk. Before I scare too many people away, I do think it's important to say that by the way, Sake Coin, yeah, this trader got taken for $1,500. I mean, they didn't take it out of their pocket, but they pushed the price up on them and then they sold, pushing the price down. Look, Sake Coin was launched at $14,800 per bottle. Crazy. Yeah, it's a 15,000 US bottle, dollar bottle of Sake. It broke $25,000 just earlier today. It's putting in higher highs and higher lows. It's in an uptrend. We're doing just fine. And I do want to say that despite this front running attack vector, if you will, the crypto opportunity remains ridiculously compelling. And there is so much opportunity in this space that I'm still pursuing this as my number one, number two, uh, approach to speculation these days. I love options, love options. So they're always going to have, and I mean equity options, they're always going to have a spot at the table, but like yield farming, DeFi and trading with automated market makers is really rocketing up the charts because of the, not when I say opportunity, I mean the profit potential and the numbers that I'm seeing, like you can sit in stable coins and make double digit returns in DeFi, it's crazy. So I am still an advocate despite this existing, but it is important to understand so you can take measures in order to manage your risk and, and not disincentivize the bots, but reduce strategically the incentive that you offer these bots, i.e., you know, recognize that you're a piece of meat in this pool of transactions pending to go into the next block and take precautions. So uh, what can you do about it? The first thing is this slippage. When you are on, and I'll use sushi swap as my example here. When you're on a swapping page, there's generally some sort of icon 
that you can interact with to select your slippage. Slippage is expressed as a percentage. And whatever percent that you enter in there, you're telling the order how much you are willing to let the market price move while your order is sitting in a pending state. So if you entered a slippage of 1%, you're basically saying, hey, look, if the market changes price by 1% or more while my order is waiting, get out, cancel the order, I don't want it anymore. So the lower slippage you enter, the lower your tolerance is for market prices moving. The lower the slippage value means the bot's orders have to be smaller because when they buy, they also move the market. And so if your slippage is fairly low, the bot can't take a big position right in front of your big order because then they would push you beyond your slippage tolerance and your order would revert. That said, low slippage is not better than high slippage. It's different from. It's like limit orders and market orders. So if you think about trading stocks, when you enter a market order, you don't know the price you're gonna get. You're saying, I wanna get in or I wanna get out now. I'll take whatever price is available. That's kind of like a high slippage trade. You're saying, I just wanna get in. I don't want to risk not being filled. I'm okay with some people going in front of me or behind me, whatever. Just get me in as fast as possible. So high slippage can be useful in fast moving markets like a market order. But if it's a slower market, and I'm talking about sake coin here, not a big market yet. And so low slippage trades make a little bit more sense here. We're not trying to get filled right now. I know the price that I want. And if I can't get that price, don't fill my trade. So low slippage says, I know the price I want. And if you can get me that price, get it. If it slips by more than that percentage amount, don't get it. So just make sure you understand that trade-off. So that is front running in crypto in a nutshell. Hey, look, if you've enjoyed this video, I'd ask that you put a comment below to let me know what other subjects you might want me to cover next. This channel is dedicated to connoisseurs of the art of speculation, for those curious minds who want to hone their craft and learn more about DeFi, crypto, options, equities, you name it. If there's a game to be played and speculation at hand, then this is the place to do it. Until then, thanks for watching. I'm Orion Zathmary, and we'll see you next time.